A few months ago, I had a brilliant idea. I'd make a tribal gates deck with Child of Alara as the commander. I'd run 55 lands along with a bunch of draw and ramp, with Maze's End, Crackling Perimeter, and a handful of beatdown options being my win cons. A plethora of ways to sacrifice Child of Alara means that I should have board control mostly handled, so I only need a mere 5 slots of the deck dedicated to interaction of all types. How efficient! Finally, a few options for big life gain means that once my land count is up where I want it, I can heal up the damage it took me to get there. It's not a high caliber deck, but it certainly scratched my goofy deck itch, and it seemed pretty solid for what it was. Unfortunately, it was a terrible idea, chiefly because of the commander. Now, allow me to lay my credentials on the table. I am a cruel control player at heart. My first commander deck was Mono Black Ruin Your Day, with Shieldred as the commander. My first deck I played with at sanctioned events was a standard Grixis control deck I built just after the release of Born of the Gods. And my favorite draft I ever played in was a Dragons of Tarkir draft, where I picked up five flattens and seven other removal spells, and spent my night gleefully watching the joy drain from my opponent's eyes as creature after creature bit the dust immediately after it was played. So when I tell you I want a commander that just repetitively bore ripes to be a good idea, I mean it. But it's not a good idea. In the context of Commander, board wipes are a type of effect that I would call asymmetric. This is confusing on the surface because they're generally literally symmetrical effects. You know, they destroy everything. But what I mean here is that they impact different players massively differently. Somebody playing a low to mid power synergistic mid range decks will feel them very brutally, but there are a lot of types of decks that just won't really care as much. Board wipes won't stop combos, they won't prevent aggro decks from abusing your life total, they won't slow down large land counts, and they won't shut down your opponents generating a lot of instant and sorcery based value. The best option my Child of Alara deck has for dealing with somebody suddenly winning is using one of the two counter spells within the deck, or preparing to instant speed sacrifice Child of Alara and hoping I don't encounter interaction of any kind. Okay, so the Child of Alara dependent game plan has some holes. Big whoop, I'm playing a gates deck man, no shit my deck has some weaknesses. However, this is a bigger problem than it seems. Going back to the idea of the card being asymmetric, we can think about how it is experienced by the decks that are more vulnerable to it. And the answer is, it's hell! It sucks so hard for these decks, they can barely even start to build a board before they're staring down the barrel of another Child of Alara sack. Even if they deal with one of my wipes, as long as my ramp game worked out as intended, there will be another one immediately following it. This is similar to the graveyard decks analogy from my last video. This deck will ruin the day of casual synergy decks, but against a less board dependent deck it'll putter around and be a mild nuisance before getting ultimately crushed, with little to no chance of actually pulling off one of its win cons. Now, Child of Alara is the most extreme example of board wipes creating highly asymmetric game experiences, but this is an issue with board wipes as a whole. I talked a bit about my Glitza deck in my midrange video, and that deck operates as a kind of homage to the mono black Shieldred deck I played when I was 15. Get card advantage and a ton of mana, and proceed to throw bombs and one sided board wipes at the table until my opponents fold. Now, that deck is much more well rounded than the theoretical Child of Alara deck. It has a lot of single target removal to deal with key threats, and a variety of win cons which can all eliminate a threatening player much faster than Maze's End or Crackling Perimeter. Nonetheless, the profile of how it fares against different decks looks very similar. I try not to pull out the deck against the low to mid power mid range decks that make up a decent portion of the decks in my playgroup because it generally stomps on these decks in theatrical fashion. However, when my opponents have pressure to prevent me from fully greeting out, or counterspells for my massive mana investments, or combo wins to catch me and my mostly sorcery speed removal suite off guard, it's much worse. Against these sorts of plays, my deck ends up looking like one of the clunky midrange decks that I usually crush. Before going further, I should take the opportunity to state that board wipes aren't bad overall. A lot of decks are heavily board based, and it's good to have a solid way to deal with that. A better version of my Glissa deck would probably be running 3-5 to five board wipes instead of 8, with tutors to bridge the gap, but years spent as a mono black player forced me into the hard truth that unconditional tutors are bland as hell, so I don't play them. 
Ultimately, the deck is what I want it to be, and I'll happily let it serve as a teaching point, as happily as I'll play it. The real thing I'm trying to convey here is the need to be mindful when constructing your deck. The interaction package of your deck, and what things it's particularly good or bad against, is something you should think about. Ideally, it should be well balanced, and if there are holes, they should be intentional rather than incidental. As an example, my Marriott Equipments deck has very little hard removal. Burn and non-creature permanent destruction, yes, but not much for big creatures. This is mostly a matter of the fact that I'm playing an aggro deck, and I'm looking to get a substantial board presence early and be threatening life totals. The deck's removal serves to slow down my opponents and deal with pesky cards like Trigon Predator, but ultimately the deck's solution to later threats is to simply deal with the player, or politic around the threat for a while. My deck's removal suite has a hole, but it's a calculated one. Another common hole in an interaction suite would be fast blue decks that choose to almost entirely run counters that don't target creatures, a choice motivated by the fact that most forms of interaction from their opponents are non-creature, and an essence scatter isn't going to help protect a turn 4 combo win. As a final note, let's return to the idea of asymmetric effects. A lot of stacks effects and hate cards also fall under this label, but stacks effects generally operate the opposite way as board wipes choking out burst your strategies that carefully plan out their resources to execute a specific game plan, while having less of an effect on a deck whose game plan consists of play tree folk or something. There's a reason why running a bunch of stacks effects is a better idea than running a bunch of board wipes. The sorts of decks shut down by an Archon of Ameria are generally stronger and more carefully constructed than the sorts of decks shut down by a Plague Wind. You can build a deck with a bunch of stacks effects and a win plan that can outrun a midrange deck, but you can't build a deck full of board wipes with a win plan that can outrun a combo deck. And if you build a deck that massacres casual midrange decks, but flails around against everything else, you're going to be struggling to create interesting and dynamic games.